Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting tutorial. This week is going to be slightly different in that we're going to be going over something that doesn't really require extend script or scripting. We're going to be taking a look at how to convert Premiere projects to earlier versions. Now you might be wondering, um, this is already a thing you can do. You can just click on save as and save as CC 2019 or 2018 or whatever. But in reality, uh, we've somehow changed what dimension we're in. And it's sort of like the Bernstein or Bernstein bears where Adobe just removed this feature. So there's no really official way to get an older version. And a lot of people are using Adobe CC 2019 now, which requires a Windows 10 or a newer version of Mac OS than I have. So when people send me projects, it's almost impossible for me half the time to open them up. So let's take a look at how we can ameliorate this. So I have here a project, and if I try and open it up, it gives me a warning saying this project was saved in a newer version of Premiere and cannot be opened. Well, one possibility would be that you can message whoever sent you this file and ask for a newer version or an older version, or you could do this following trick. So what you'll need is your file and 7-zip. And what we can do is simply copy and paste or duplicate our file inside of our uh, file menu. And we're going to do is remove the extension so it just has the file name. Then we'll click away and make sure we change it. Now we have an empty file or what appears to be an empty file, but what this really is is a sort of encrypted, I think by SHA-256 or something of that like, um, XML file containing all of the information about the Premiere project. So what I'm gonna do is now that I have my empty file, I'm going to right click on it, go to 7-zip, and I'm going to extract here. And this is, depending on the way you extract it, going to give you a file or a folder with your new file. And now what we can do is click on open or open with, depending on your OS. And you just wanna open up this new file with a text editor that will recognize it. And as you can see, we've got a giant XML file that goes down all the way to 180,000 lines of code. And what this does is contains all of the information about our project. So the easiest way to do this is we're simply going to go to the very top. And if we go through here, you can see we have our project and the version equals 35. Now, depending on what version of Premiere you have, you want to change this. So just to make sure we have compatibility back a while, a good number is 33. So once we've saved that, we'll go ahead and click on save and we're going to copy and change this file again. And we're gonna add back in our extension uh, I'm gonna add some extra text here and just say .pr project. So now let's go ahead and try and open this and see if we can access it. So now that we've got Premiere loaded up, let's go ahead and go to open project. We'll go into the folder it created and try our new project. And as you can see, we just need to convert the project, give it a new name so that it has a backup copy. And our project is going to load up just like that. So of course, just make sure you have a backup in case if something happens. On occasion, when you do this process, some nested sequences and other uh, sort of internal things will get messed up a little bit. But for the most part, uh, everything is compatible from version to version. You just need to change that XML data. So again, just delete the extension off of your file. Use 7-zip to extract it. And then using any text editor, change the version number to something earlier and then change it back to a Premiere project. And that's how you can get an earlier version of any Premiere project you want. Doing this entirely with a script is not entirely viable because um, all but one part of the process can be automated. You cannot uh, automate 7-zip using a JavaScript script as far as I'm concerned. You may be able to use some kind of batch or command file to get it to launch. But uh, that's basically how you do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to leave the thumbs up if you enjoyed. Hit subscribe for more weekly videos. And we'll be back to making ExtendScript videos on our other days. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.